Next set of tools over here, you got, uh, you've got outputs after you get through doing what's called input versus output. So you, you're kind of inputting um, looks and then on your output you're, you're, you're changing them toward the very end. We will get into this later. This gets a little bit complex as well with your output. Uh, but as we move along here, we're going to go to curves. The, 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 the most uh, used items here are going to be the color wheels, the curves, and then uh, your qualifier. Uh, which we'll go through for doing secondaries, and th those are go those are going to be the basic tools that you're going to be using it within Resolve. Uh, when you come onto the curves, usually it looks like uh, this, with everything chained together. You have the uh, the Y values, which is your luminance. Then you have your red channel, your green channel, and blue blue channels. You have those general hues, and then you have the Y channel, which is the brightness levels in those uh, in each one of those channels. If you leave them chained like this, you're basically changing everything. You are bringing down, well, let, let's kind of describe what this does. This is a histogram going from left to right. You have zero, which is uh, pure black over here on the side, and 100, which is pure white here on the side. So you have your levels here. We've got a lot of kind of low level items in here. And then we've got this little spike, which is actually the windows towards the right. That's kind of leading toward the highlights here. And then this is your highlight node. This is your dark node. Now to control these things here, you can grab your dark node here and you can slide it to the right. If you slide it to the right, it's basically redefining your blacks. It's taking these things that are low lights and putting them down to your node. This is a redefinition of where your of where your darks go. Now those items that were once further up here are now defined as uh, right where that node is. If I bring this up here, now this uh, items, everything is crushed below that. Same as on highlights, is if I grab this and drag it over, it's redefining my highlights. It's bringing these highlights and crushing them and bringing them to this point right there. That window is being crushed uh, at that point right there. Now that my detail is lost at that window. And if you drag this eventually all the way over, it's going to bloom out and destroy your image. And if you grab this and define everything as black, all these, these mountains in here as black, you're going to drag it down until everything's basically destroyed. So the way you can kind of think of this is your dark node, your highlight node, and this is the turn it up region. This is the turn it down region. So if you want your darks and you want to turn them down, you drag them toward this region. If you want to turn them up, you drag them up toward this region. Same as the highlights. This is the turn it up direction. This is the turn it down direction. Now what you can do is as you move through this, you've got basically if you look at this as IRE, you've got 0 IRE to 100 IRE at this point, And you can move up and right around the middle point here, you've got your mid grays. What's kind of cool about Resolve is you can go and select, let's, let's add a little bit of contrast to this image back on our primary here. We're just going to, so we can kind of see what we're doing. Go back to one, change our contrast here. We're going to move back to our curves. On our curves here, uh, we can move up this line here. Or actually, we can take our uh, mouse up over the window and it turns when you're on the curves this will turn this into this little eyedropper and you can say well I want to work I want to work on shadows that are about uh, this dark right here this these aren't really super dark I'm going to click on that I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere around like right here let's see if I'm right yep I was right uh, but you see a whole bunch of little nodes there right now I'm just we're operating on the on the white node uh, but what you see there is you see your red blue and green if you, if you go to these channels as well you see where your red what the reds are the values are in that point that I clicked on a little high above the the general luminance here the green is a little bit below it and then the blue and then the blue doesn't have a node so those are actually those are actually pretty close to the bottom so that actually oh that is that node right down there so these are really low lights right now they're they're almost at, at, at zero down there so, so you know that the blues are pretty suppressed in those shadows right there, and you have more prominent red shadows and green shadows in, in those darker shadows. So if you're trying to change colors in shadows or highlights, that's how you're going to see this on your, on your uh, curves here. But right now, uh, this note, I'm going to say I'm going to darken those darks by bringing them down, pushing them down a little bit, making them a little bit darker. But let's say I want to keep my highlights up uh, a little higher over here. Let's go up uh, maybe on this white wall right there, and I want to bring the highlights uh, right there up. And look at the contrast I'm creating with kind of this area being the pivot point there. Uh, I can bring these a little further up and make uh, more contrast. And this is what's called an S-curve here, is when you crush or, or when you darken the darks, height, uh, lighten the highlights without crushing the whites and the darks. You're leaving the whites and the darks absolutely alone, but you're doing a bit of contrast, you're doing kind of a contrast curve, which brightens the brights, darkens the darks, and you get this kind of contrast curve, and then you get a stretch on your entire image. And then you can see how contrasty it's kind of turning out here. But you can see how just sliding this around, you get a lot of power over operating on the luminance levels of your image. Now, another thing you can do here is you can detach this and you can go to your red channel here and you can work on your red channel. And I had all these chains, so it was chaining all these things together. It was, I was changing the red values, green or the white values, it was chaining the all the values together so now when I go into red the red has been moved with the with the uh, with the luminance levels the green is the same the blue is the same 
Um, let's put this back to home here. Actually, I'm going to add contrast and put that on a different node here so I don't have to keep changing it. So add contrast to this image. And I'll add another node, alt -tail. So I'm going to be getting into nodes up next episode. But on, this episode on this one here, I'm going to go to my curves. I'm going to uh, chain these together, but this time I'm going to say I'm just going to work on my luminance values. If I if I do uh, if I do a luminance change here, like I was showing before, I do the S curve there, and now I go to my red channel. This is still the same. The green channel is still the same. The blue channel because they weren't all chained together. Now I have separate control over these items here. So let's say you want to balance the shot a little bit. And right now the reds and the greens and the blues, the blues are a little bit lower than the reds, and this is a warmer image as a result. So if I go to the, if I go to the blue channel and I bring it down, notice it's going to get warmer. If I want to uh, balance this level out, I'm going to bring the blues up a little bit and bring the greens up a little bit, or I could even just bring down the reds and get these all kind of balanced, and my shot will look a little bit more color balanced. Right there, and now my shot looks fairly like normal. That looks like normal sunlight coming through because I've adjusted the the balance on these curves. So you have a lot of control. You have control over the luminance on the on the red channel, green channel, blue channel, or you can link them all together, or you can unlink them and just solely work with the luminance. All right, let's go through some different curves here. We've got um, let me put that back to the chain there. We've got under these little dots here. You move through these, and you have different types of curves. You have hue versus hue, hue versus saturation, hue versus luminance. Hue versus, or luminous versus saturation, and saturation versus saturation. Basically what this does is you look at the, the verses uh, here. Whatever is the second one on this is the one that's being affected by what you select here. So probably easier to describe this. Let's go to hue versus saturation. So say we come up here, and this is obviously, let's go to vector scope. Vector scope, this red is really, really bleeding right here, uh, almost all the way to the, the saturation limits. So what we can do is we can grab our, we can move it with this curve here open. We move up, move up here, and uh, this turns to an eyedropper, and you click on the red right there. And what it does is it adds three nodes. This graph, right by the way, goes all the way over here to the right and then continues to the left. So it adds three nodes, one then move over here to the right, two, three. This is the middle node, and then these are the curved nodes, this one and this one. So we grab this middle one right here, and we drag that down. Look what it does to the saturation within the red. It desaturates that red color that I chose. And you can widen the range of what it desaturates by moving this over and this over. And that widens the range of what's, and almost like everything's desaturated in there. Not everything, but uh, we still have kind of these colors right through here, but, but a lot has been desaturated. So let's reset that node there. Shift home will reset it. Once again, uh, let's try to do different colors. Not much other different colors in here. Let's try, because faces are mostly red here if we select, select that. Uh, but now you can see this a little bit more. This is the, the midpoint right there. If we grab that and drag it down, look what happens to the face as I drag this down. It's desaturating the face. It selected the reds in the face, in the face color there. Or you can boost it up, and it boosts the saturation. Look what it's doing. And then you can widen the range by pulling these dots out to the left and to the right, like so. And look what it's doing on our vector scope, kind of freaking out there by widening that range of red and just blasting us with red there. So as we move down and we do the next one, well, we'll uh, let's go hue versus hue. If you choose a certain color of hue, that will change the hue of that hue that I just selected. If I grab this, it's going to go through the range. Look how it's circling it around uh, on my vector scope here, circling it around the, the vector scope as it's changing it to different colors, to blue, to magenta, wherever it's pointing on my vector scope, yellow green, and so on. It's not doing a great job, but, but you can see what it does. This is nice if you just need to shift a color just slightly. If you do it more extreme, you're going to get more noticeable. Look how it like spreads it out here and just rips it apart, and it just doesn't look good. Uh, but it is it is quite a powerful tool, and it's usually used for just doing uh, small hue adjustments. Shift home to put that node back to normal. Let's go to hue versus luminance. So we can choose, once again, the red, and we can grab the red and drag it down, and look what happens to it. It makes it darker, or it makes it Lighter, so you can make it usually brighten it up, and usually this is not meant for extremes. It's meant to just brighten something up a little bit or darken a, a certain color just a little bit. Lumen versus saturation. This is kind of a cool thing. If you want to get rid of the colors and the shadows, if you want to make the blacks look like they're 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 black. Like let's select the uh, let's see if we can find an image with more darks in it. Like right here, we can select like we're going to have a very blue hue from these chairs. Let's go to the shadows here and just demonstrate uh, what you can do. And it selects that as the midpoint where I selected my darks. If we bring this down to the bottom there and there, it basically kills the blues in that. It'll kill the saturation in that area and that level of luminance. So now if we watch this as we hit command D to turn that on and off, watch this down here. So you just make, uh, it just kills the, the colors out of the, out of the dark areas there. So if we Go over here and select, oops, 
go up here and select kind of this area down there, and we pull the, this area down. We turn down the saturation from this point and below uh, in the luminance. Watch what happens in this area right here. Turn that on and off. It's it's just killing some of the blue color in that area right there. It's very subtle, but, but it's, it's killing off the blue in that area right there. Saturation versus saturation. Choose something that is very saturated here. It adds a node right there in the middle. Drag that down, and it desaturates that point completely. So, so you have these different curves that are very powerful to create uh, uh, to get very specific uh, color vectors and, and saturation regions and shadow regions.